which industries are leading right now with this deployment in the real world? And how do you see that changing in the next couple of years, next five years, next decade down the road? <laughs> you know more industries than all of us. Um, so, uh, so I actually see quite a bit of, uh, I, I would say, out of the box thinking in the tech industry, yeah, so where we will take small language models or how do we actually solve some of the limitations around, around RAG. But one thing that um, I actually see almost every day is from the leaders in the financial services industry. They are asking us very, very interesting and I would say spot on type of questions about uh, return on investments on these, uh, on these generative AI based uh, applications and, and use cases. Now, financial services industry, of course, is a highly regulated industry for all the right reasons. And uh, these are the folks who are ultimately uh, putting uh, or holding our toes, the, the technology folks' uh, toes to the, to the fire. But I think they are asking some very, very interesting questions right now. I wish I would have seen the same level of interesting questions being asked by financial services industries like 12 years back when we were talking about cloud and public cloud and hosted and, and things like that. I wasn't hearing it then, but right now I'm actually hearing some very interesting questions there. So I'm really excited to see uh, how, uh, how financial services will evolve uh, very soon using LLMs and Gen AI. Yeah, I can, I can actually vouch to that <laughs> on the financial industry aspect of it. And along with it's like uh, the, the return on investment basically for Gen AI solutions. Another thing is what you touch base is like regulations. If there is a, everybody wants Gen AI, but there is also what you say, um, the whole thought of holding people back is on the how regulated it is. What is the safety around my data? Is my data crossing the boundaries? Can we get things in premise? That question, if it is solved together. So I feel like financial industry on that line can do can actually you know, benefit a lot from Gen AI space. Uh, outside of the financial industry, because I think we've covered that pretty well with the other panelists, there's tremendous progress being made in, in health care in all different kinds of ways. The vast amounts of information that's being used. I mean, one of the Nobel Prizes that was given out, in, I mean, the Nobel Prize in chemistry this year was for AlphaFold and the work that was done with that. And the pharmaceutical companies are using AI uh, to develop new therapies and new drugs, and at the same time, analyze data. There's, I don't know if everyone's aware of this, but there's been a huge data explosion in, uh, in biology, in molecular biology, in bioinformatics, and they have devices which can monitor intercellular communication, so you can in real time see how uh, you know, a cancer tumor can defeat the immune system, almost like you're debugging a computer program. And this information is so voluminous, it can't possibly be understood without something like a language model. They've also trained language models on DNA sequences. So you can actually get to generate new DNA sequences which are useful for experimentation and understanding how things work. I think uh, astronomy as well, there's all kinds of things going on in terms of data processing. You've all seeing these images of black holes and things like that, which is all advanced uh, technology which uses similar types of algorithms to language models. They're not quite language models, but they use the GPUs, they use signal processing, and, and all of this is going to create a huge explosion in science and technology. I think generalizing that, there was some initiative recently of, in terms of, uh, you talk about pharma, but more generally in terms of academic papers or, or basically large language models applied to study scientific papers to draw some new patterns, called connections, Absolutely. especially you graph it out and develop some new, new relationship, new links between topics. Yeah. And I, I will touch with one more industry. It's like the education, I feel like, uh, especially the younger kids and how uh, mm. the information is available right away. And I'll give example of my seven-year-old who will just use the, you know, chat GPT ask any question, the voice is like, hey, I wanna run, I wanna learn about the Nile ri River and Egypt and you know, all the information is right there available. He doesn't have to go to library and all those things. So I think it's very transformational in multiple industries right now. Education just wanted to add. Yeah. 